I'd like to welcome everybody to our regular scheduled meeting of the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners this January 24th, 2017. Our first order of business, Ms. Holberg, you have the pleasure. Thank you very much. I, um, the pledge is going to be led tonight by Thomas Smith, grandson of Mr. Commissioner David Brock, member of Troop 2, First Baptist Church, First Baptist Church of Griffin, and he is working on his communications merit badge. So, so please join us in the pledge, and I'll follow by the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in prayer. Father, we're here today to ask for your blessings and guidance in the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Again, Mr. Thomas Smith is a uh, grandson of Commissioner Brock and also a good friend of mine, Mr. Kelly Smith, is also his son as well. Thank you again, Smith. Our um, approval of agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the agenda with the two additional items as amended. And they are to add two new items to the regular agenda number 26 i believe it is consider adoption of water and wastewater rates to reflect a nine percent increase annually for water and a 3.5 percent increase annually for wastewater starting march 1 2017 through and including march 1 2021 for the water and wastewater department and number 27 uh, consider a resolution authorizing the waiving of the MIS cost index rating system for water and wastewater rates for 2017. And Brent Keller will address both items. I've got a, a motion to amend the agenda. Second. Got a second by Ms. Ward. Any questions or comments? Being on all favor signify by raising your hand. Be 7 0 to amend the agenda to add items 26 and 27. Under presentations and delegations, item number one recognizes Ms. Tina Giles with the Electric Department System Operations Division for 2016's Strongest Link, Strongest Link Award recipient. Correct. The Electric Director Dan Thompson will address. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see y'all. This this is an exciting presentation. Not only uh, well, for several different reasons. We have charged uh, our team at, at Griffin Power with raising the excellence bar, and this is the outcome. So <laughs> we're, we're very, very proud of it. I'd like to read just a, a, a very short narrative on, on why we're here. Uh, the Electric Systems Operation Division has seen an unusual amount of turnover since May of last year. And Tina has been instrumental in getting us to the point of stability that we have reached today. She voluntarily gave up her day shift and took over the rotating shift that was no longer staffed, which meant working much longer hours, weekends, nights, holidays, all of the above. It's crucial and imperative that all of our system operators receive in-depth training, and Tina was tasked and charged with this duty, using her knowledge and years of experience, she devised a regimented, that's a very mild word, training program with the determination she always exhibits, making sure that it was comprehensive and extremely successful. She still managed to complete her normal assignments, handling all that crossed her desk with, desk with professionalism and timeliness at all times. It's, it's been somewhat of a rocky road for us in system operations, but Tina kept us going with her, we will get through this and be better for it attitude. And that is at all times with, with Tina. 
Tina is the first person I turn to when I need a sounding board and is trusted implicitly by all field personnel. She approaches all situations with an eye on detail and can always be counted on to follow through on a task with precision. She never hesitates to go above and beyond anytime she's needed and never has been asked to stay late or come to work during times of trouble. As I write this and think of all she does, not for just for, not for just for system operations, but for the elected part, electric department and the city as a whole. It seems to me that Tina is an excellent candidate for the 2016 strongest link in the chain. I'm very proud of you. Thank you very much, Tina. For all you do. write because she's very dear to my heart and I knew that if she was selected then what I had written would be read for a whole year I didn't want her to be embarrassed but basically her spirit her courage her determination is why I think that she deserved this for employee of forever and I don't know what I would ever do without her years I've always wanted my work to speak for me and apparently it has um, thank you for those beautiful words um, thank you Kim and Dan for trusting me and doing my job and doing it well thank you for all that you do thank you Sabrina thank you thank you to my fellow system operators Missy Thank you to Lee and the crew. Thank you guys for trusting me. Thank you for allowing me to wake you up in the middle of the night and not fussing <laughs> at me. Um, thank you to the board. Thank you everyone for recognizing me. This is truly an honor. And I pray that I can always give you the best of me at all. Thank you. Tana, do you have any guests here tonight you want to introduce? Um, That's okay. Yes. <laughs> so everyone in attendance, the Strongest Link Award for 2016 is our Employee of the Year Award. So this is the city's highest honor for an employee. And again, we want to congratulate you and thank you for your hard work, Ms. Yow. Item number two, consider proclamation declaring February 17, 2017 to be Arbor Day. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve said proclamation. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Morrow, seconded by Mr. Hallberg to approve the proclamation. Uh, any questions or comments? Me and I, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. He's seven zero. Is anyone here to receive this tonight? Yes. Yes, I believe so. Mr. Jones? There he is. Oh, okay. He was over there. Let me see. Guess I can come down here. He's <coughs> representing the environmental council. City's environmental council.
proclamation declaring Arbor Day 2017, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, reduce heating and cooling costs, moderate, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, provide habitat for wildlife, and reduce stormwater runoff. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. Trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, beautify our community wherever they are planted, and are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas the city of Griffin has appointed an environmental council to facilitate and oversee the planting of trees in the city, and whereas the city has pruned and mulched trees throughout the city's rights of way, and whereas the city of Griffin has been recognized as a tree city USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting ways, in that regard, everyone is invited to an Arbor Day celebratory event to be held at 10 a.m. on February 17, 2017 at the city of Griffin Police Station located at 868 West Poplar Street, at which time we will plant six Brody Cedars that can be decorated by elementary school students during holiday time. <laughs> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the City of Griffin does hereby proclaim Friday, February 17, 2017, to be Arbor Day 2017 in the City of Griffin and urges all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands, to support our city's urban forestry programs, and to plant trees to promote the well-being of present and future generations. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Griffin to be affixed on this 14th day of February in the year of our Lord 2017, signed by the Mayor Rod McCoy, attested by City Manager Mr. Kenny Smith. I'm Tim Jones of the uh, Environmental Council, and on behalf of all of the members of the uh, Environmental Council, I thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll have citizens' comments. Uh, open the floor to comments from the audience. Comments here relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to a concern within the jurisdiction of the city commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. The chairperson reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to the city's business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. Do we have anyone on my left that would like to give comments tonight? Anyone on the left? Is there anyone on my right that will have coming? All right. Seeing none, we will move on to public hearings. Public hearings are conducted to allow public comment on specific advertised issues such as rezoning ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative actions to be considered by the City Commission. Item number three, receive comments regarding a variance request to consolidate two lots located at 102 South Bronner Street. Planning and Development Director <coughs> St. Kirk will address. Mr. Kirk. Good evening. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Durham uh, has submitted the request to uh, consolidate lots at 102 Bronner Street. Um, he is in essence trying to consolidate the lots so they can do an addition to the home. Um, the, the lots total 0.19 acres uh, in, in the MD or zoning district, you're required to have 0.25 acres. So he is literally six hundredths of a 
acre short. Um, but in the spirit of us creating larger lots versus smaller lots, the uh, Planning and Zoning Board and staff have recommended approval for his request. Do we have anyone here to speak on this public hearing for or against? Any questions by any other commissioners? Okay. Moving on to item number four. Received comments yeah. regarding a request to rezone property located at 1069 West College Street. Extension consisting of 0.82 plus or minus acres from medium density residential MDR to neighborhood business <coughs> district NBD, submitted by James and Christine Phillips. Mr. Chairman, for the record, I need to abstain as the property 11, 13, 15 DFR. Okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Phillips is uh, wanting to reopen the store, uh, convenience store, the laundry mat, and I think the uh, car wash as well. Right now, the property is zoned MDR, and you can't use those uh, the commercial properties as of right now. Uh, rezoning it to MBD would allow him to use the properties for those businesses, and also it would grandfather the two houses that are located on that property. We would grandfather those to continue as a, a residential use. However, if, however, if they're vacated, um, they will lose their grandfather status. But as of right now, it will be okay. Uh, so, of course. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board and staff do recommend approval for the request. Okay. Do we have anyone here to speak for or against this rezoning? Any questions from any of the commissioners? It's good to see Mr. Phillips and his daughter out there. I'm sorry, his <laughs> wife. Sorry about that. <laughs> Item number five, receive comments regarding an ordinance amending code of Griffin by repealing present Article 2 of Chapter 26, Businesses, and enacting as Article 7 of Chapter 82, Taxation, City Attorney Drew Whalen will address. We've got several ordinances on the agenda for action tonight. This is the only one which the law requires you hold a public hearing on. We're basically taking the provisions that are currently in your code under Chapter 26, Businesses, where other business regulations are found and moving it to Chapter 82, Taxation. The reason why is your occupation tax is a revenue-raising measure. It's not a form of regulation. And it really never should have probably been codified in Chapter 26 as it was. There was a change last year in, the, in how the interest rate on delinquent taxes is to be calculated. It actually lowered the tax of, of interest rate to about half of what we previously were entitled to recover. In putting this together, I found that in 2012, I believe it was, there was a bill passed which, uh, by the legislature which did also change the due date for businesses which are not in operation on January 1st. If you're an existing business and you've been operating such a, on January 1st, the tax becomes due and payable. If it's not paid by April 1st, it's delinquent subject to some penalties and the interest. For businesses that were not in operation on January 1st and start later in the year, the law currently says that the tax does not have to be paid now as it originally was prior to you going into business. You still have that 90-day window in which to come in and pay it without incurring the penalty and interest. So that essentially is what the, the change is about at this time. As I said, the law does require on occupation tax, anytime we amend this ordinance, that we have to hold a public hearing uh, so that the public's better informed as to the consequences of it. There's no change in the methodology by which you impose the tax. There are five methods allowed by law. You use the combination method, which is a combination of uh, a flat fee per business plus a per equivalent employee uh, charge. And there's no change in, in the rates as such. So. So the tax itself is going to remain the same. Are we raising the cost per employee? No. Now we did change the administrative fee. Yes, yeah, so the, that's and the reason we did that is because this ordinance was first adopted after the law was uh, uh, enabling us to do so was passed in 93 or 94, and we set an administrative <coughs> fee at that time of twenty dollars. The law says that your administrative fee should approximate the actual cost of administration of the tax. We had the finance department go back and do a study 
And based on their study, it's probably costing between $45 and $50 per business to levy and collect this tax on an annual basis. So we felt like an increase from $20 to $40 was appropriate. We might still not be recouping quite the full cost, but we didn't want to raise it too much in, in one year on taxpayers. So that's the reason for that. That increase, increase goes into effect next year? They go in, yes. Well, yes, that's correct. And the notices went out back in, I think, December, and the tax is currently being paid up through April of this year for businesses that went in effect from January 1. We have any, this is a public hearing, we have any questions or comments from anyone in the audience that like can speak on this matter? Any commissioners have any other questions? Not yet. Very much. Moving on to our consent agenda, and I will entertain a motion to... Chairman, if there's no objection to taking them all at once, I move that we approve items 6 through 13 on the published consent agenda. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Morris, second by Mr. Brock to take item 6 through 13. In the affirmative, all in favor signify by raising your hand. 7 0. <coughs> Moving on to our regular agenda. Item number 14 consider a request of a variance to consolidate two lots located at 102 South Bronner Street, planning and development director for Tucson Kirk will address. Flowers, I assume, is okay with this. If yes. If, if that's the case, I move that we approve uh, said variance. Second. Got a motion by Ms. Morris, second by Ms. Ward to approve item number 14. Any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor signify by raising your hand. 7 0. Item number 15 consider a request to rezone property located at 1069 West College Street Extension, consisting of point 0.82 plus or minus acres from medium density residential MDR to <coughs> neighborhood business district NBD, submitted by Mr. James and Christine Phillips. Chairman, I move that we approve the rezoning as published. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Morris, second by Ms. Ward. Any questions or comments? All in favor signify by raising your hand. Please. Six. One extension. Zero, one extension. Item number 16, consider approval of work contract and negotiated bid to Georgia Asphalt Inc. for the 2017 LMIG resurfacing program in the amount of $241,908.57 for the Public Works Department. Motion approved. Second. Got a motion by Ms. Ward, second by Mr. Morrow to approve. Any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor signify by raising your hand. Seven zero. Item number 17, approved loan submittal to the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority, GIFA, for a drinking water state revolving fund, DWSRF loan, for the rehabilitation of Cabin Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, CCWTP, permit number Georgia 0020214, in the amount of $16 million. Second. Got a motion by Ms. Ward, second by Mr. Morrow. Any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor signify by raising your hand. Be 7 0. Item number 18, consider on first reading an ordinance amending the code of Griffin, Georgia, at Chapter 6, Alcoholic Beverages, by deleting present chapter and adopting, in lieu thereof, a comprehensive re revision of alcoholic alcohol regulations. This chapter was revised in October 2016. Effective January 1st, 2017. Chairman, I move we approve at first reading said ordinance. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Morrow, second by Ms. Ward. Uh, any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. 7 0. Item number 19, consider on first reading an ordinance amending the Code of Griffin, Georgia, at Chapter 22, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 2, Construction Standards. Section 22-31, State Minimum Standard Code, to reflect action by the DCA Board adding the 2012 International Swimming Pool and Spa Code, ICC, 
with 2014 Georgia amendments as a mandatory statewide code to be enforced locally. Make a motion to approve the question. Second. Got a motion to approve <coughs> by Mr. Holberg, second by Mr. Morrow. Question. This deals with the drain systems and all that other stuff, the backflows. And I believe it comprehensively involves it all of the heat that you construction of swimming pools. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Being none, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. 7 0. Item number 20, consider on first reading an ordinance amending the Code of Griffin by repealing the present Article 2 of Chapter 26 businesses and enacting as Article 7 of Chapter 82 taxation. Make a motion to approve. I second. Got a motion by Mr. Brock, second by Mr. Morrow. Any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. 7 0. Item number 21, consider on first reading an ordinance amending the Code of Griffin, Georgia, at Article 3 of Chapter 10, Amusements and Entertainment, by deleting the present article in its entirety and enacting in lieu thereof a new article in compliance with OCGA 50-27-86. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Holberg, second by Ms. Ward. Any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. 7 0. Item number 22, remove from the table and consider appointment of one member of the Griffin Spalding Land Bank Authority for a four year term. Chairman, I move we remove this item from the table. Second. Got a motion and a second. Motion by Mr. Morris, second by Ms. Ward to remove from the table. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Ready to take some action. Make a motion. I'd like to nominate Patty Bankman for that board position for a four year term. Chairman, I move we close the nomination. Second the motion. We got a motion and a second to close the nomination with Ms. Patty Beckman. Beckham. 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 Okay. Beckham. 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 Patty Beckham. Any further questions or comments? Being none, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. 7 0. And Ms. Beckham will report to the Land Bank Authority. Item number 23 removed from the table and consider appointment of City Consumer Family Services at large member to the Spalding County Collaborative Authority for Families and Children. Do we have a name in the book? We do, but I think Ms. Yule Redding still wants to be appointed, but her name was not added in a timely so manner. So if, we, if we don't remove, take no action, we'll move on. Is she in the book? But she's she not. Uh, I don't believe. I talked to her. I didn't know that she. Uh, she was not. So when you had called me uh -huh. Friday, it was already past 12 o'clock. So. Oh, okay. So we, just we, can't, we can't do it. We just want to move on. Okay. Move on. I'm not going to move. Just don't, move. just don't take it off the table and then we'll right. deal with it next week. Or next. Okay. Item number. Does she need to do need get a form? Her? We need to get our form put okay. in the book. Right. Isn't that right, Mr. Parliamentary? Correct. It'll just stay on the table stay until it comes table. back we'll up. Book, take it off. So we vote. Okay. There's no vote taken. <coughs> Item number 24 removed from the table and consider appointment of one at large city member to Griffin Spalding Area Transportation Committee for an annual term to expire December 31st, 2017. Chairman, I move to remove the item from the table. Second. Got a motion and a second to remove the item from the table. Um, table what? Mm -hmm. They were all tables. Questions or comments? Being nine, all in favor, signify by raising your hand. Seven zero. Uh, we have the one name. Is that right, Mr. Scroggs? Correct. I talked to Mr. Scroggs. The gentleman came to our last meeting, and I uh, nominate him for this position. Make a motion to close nomination. Second. We got a motion and a second to close Mr. nomination Mr. with one name, Mr. Scroggs. 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 John Scroggs. Scroggs. Sorry about it, Mr. Scroggs. Um, any questions or comments? Being none, all in favor signify by raising your hand. 7-0. May I interrupt just a second? Ms. Watson, when you send a letter notifying him, would you send a copy of the minutes from our January meeting that uh, Kathy has? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Item number 25, appoint one commissioner to the Archway Executive Committee. That's what are two decided? That's your appointment. Is it really? That's your appointment. Here. That appointment will be Mr. Doug Hallberg, who is going to serve us well on the Archway Executive Committee. Thank you. That is, I don't, we don't need to do anything else. <coughs> is this still a minute item? Oh, thank you. She's on the ball? She is on the ball? That was my contribution for the year. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 26, consider adoption of ward and wastewater rates to reflect 9% increase annually for water rates and 3.5% increase annually for wastewater rates starting March 1st, 2017 through and including March 1st, 2021 for the ward and wastewater department of the public works and utilities department. Mr. Chairman, unfortunately I have to move to approve this. We got a motion. I <laughs> second. We got a second. Motion by Mr. Morris, second by Ms. Ward. Any questions or comments? Any other commission? Being none, all in favor signify by raising your hand. Any opposed? It's going to be 6 1. Ms. Flowers is opposed. Item number 27. Consider a resolution that's authorizing the waiving of the municipal cost index rating system for water and wastewater rates for 2017. Chairman, I move we approve said resolution. We got a motion by Mr. Morrow, seconded by Ms. Ward. Any questions or comments? Being nine, all in favor signify by raising your hand. That one is seven zero. And that concludes our agenda for tonight. City yes, sir. I have a couple of items. Uh, GMA Mayor's Day went extremely well, and you've got, uh, I was going to say hardware, but it's not really hardware. Glassware. It's glassware, glassware <laughs> there. Uh, we're very, very proud of our Live, Work, Play Award that we received um, from the Georgia Municipal Association in conjunction with Georgia Trend Magazine, and we will be featured in Georgia Trend Magazine in an upcoming edition. So we're very excited about about that award and want to show our appreciation to the staff for the hard work in putting our nomination together. Mr. Hayes and Mr. Miller worked hard to get our nomination together and it's a reflection from all of our departments as uh, to our efforts working together what we can accomplish and I hope the community is just as proud of that award as we are. Uh, we had the legislative breakfast yesterday morning and Representative uh, Karen Mathiak came and uh, joined us at that breakfast, so we appreciate her attendance at that. And after the conference, Ms. O'Connor and I visited the Capitol and spoke to both Representative Knight and Representative Mathiak there at the Capitol. So we had a very successful conference. Uh, right after that, we met at uh, the Georgia Municipal Association. They had called a meeting of representatives from the Southern Crescent that were contiguous to I-75 corridor. And I think Mayor Reichert in Macon actually assembled the group, and we were missing some, but we have representatives from the city of Forsyth, city of Jackson. Mayor Reichert was there. Uh, who else was there? I can't remember. Locust Grove was there. Stockbridge was there. But anyway, they want to form somewhat of an alliance to meet again on... February the 15th in Forsyth with all the, a representative from each city and a representative from each county, an elected official and a manager from each of those cities and counties that are in that corridor, which basically stretches from the south part of Clayton County all the way down to Macon. And they want us to start thinking about plans for economic development, transportation, and all of the things that would be preparing us for the growth that is expected for the Southern Crescent. Basically, we talked about the northern arc of Atlanta is just about full. And as Mayor Pippin described it, uh, you can only get so many ants in the ant hill and get them so far from the queen ant before there's nowhere else for them to go, except those ants are going to start migrating to the south side, and we need to be prepared for that corridor between South Clayton and Macon. 
So, uh, Mr. Mayor, if you can be there on <coughs> February the 15th in Forsyth, beginning at about 9 a.m., or if you can, if you can appoint somebody to represent us, and of course I'll make plans to be there, and we will proceed to see where this alliance takes us. Well, right now, I would love to be there, but if one of our transportation guys can add more to that conversation, I would love to have them to come along with us. I don't know if it's, we can have too much representation there, but there's people who've been working on this. And it'll be the thrill, but we'll ride riding separate cars. Okay, you know? well, I mean, we got time to decide. <laughs> I'll, I'll just need to let them know how many representatives we'll have there, but we've got time. I just wanted to let you know All right, thank about you. the discussion. What happens if we're going to move up here? I right? um, <laughs> wanted to congratulate Ms. Giles, and I'll still do that even though she's gone and everybody from the electric department's gone, but she is really a gem, and we're very, very proud of her and what she represents. Uh, tomorrow, the staff will be in our annual goals workshop. We'll be at the Senior Center all day. So it'll be, if you come by here to, to chat with us, we'll be down there working along our goals for next year. Uh, you know, we have an intergovernmental retreat on February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd that we talked about this morning, but I guess that leads me to the question if you guys want to have a separate goals workshop for the year uh, at some point after the Archway retreat, or maybe that is that too much? Second workshop day almost fourth Tuesday fourth Tuesday in February would you like to schedule an all-day goals workshop for them I think we need to because yeah. I think we yeah. need to yeah. get yeah. to the nuts and bolts of our departments and where they want to go okay the 28th we'll schedule because you have to fashion a budget on our whims yes sir <laughs> And then maybe after the, you know, we'll have the archway behind us, we'll know kind of how that flushed out. So, uh, and I left you some flyers. We've scheduled what we're calling car chat on Thursday, February the 21st to discuss with some of our automotive repair facilities and storage facilities, get some dialogue started between us and them about how we can uh, improve the aesthetics of particular areas. And, and I, excuse me, I assume uh, that we're contacting all these businesses individually. To yes. Apply. And February the 28th is the the real estate development forum that we have set up to uh, have another development forum. If you recall, we had one last year where we invited developers from wherever to come in and look at some of the opportunities that we have here. So I'll get with the staff tomorrow and see if we need to uh, move that to another date since it's pretty far out based on our decision to have our workshop on the 28th or whether they can handle it in conjunction with our workshop. So I'll let you know definitely on that. And unless anybody has a question, that's my report. Just very briefly, uh, you read on first reading tonight four ordinances, and I'm proud to say I think that brings us up very current uh, with our city codes when those are finally adopted and uh, codified. Of course, we're starting into a new legislative session here a couple of weeks ago, and there'll be more to look at as <coughs> the session wraps up and see what new law is coming to effect. The second thing, though, if you'll go back and look at your agenda item on the corn-operated amusement machines, I put an excerpt from a Georgia Supreme Court decision in there, which is something I rarely do, but I did it because we had to readopt that ordinance based upon the Supreme Court's uh, decision in a case last year involving the city of Clarkston, which had also adopted the same model ordinance that GMA had provided. And what the court says, with under this preemption doctrine, which we all, I think, now started to take notice of, is that if you are allowed by the General Assembly to adopt a local ordinance in an area where they have comprehensive regulation, you can only adopt what they say you can adopt. You can't embellish it. You can't make it stronger. 
uh, certainly cannot conflict with it. But they spanked the hand, so to speak, of the city of Clarkston for adding to, and it was really GMA through their model ordinance that added to it. So I think that's a concept that you need to come familiar with. It used to be fairly simple. When somebody said, do you think an ordinance is valid and enforceable, to say, yes, it is. But now you've got to consider the whole multitude of state law and see if the state has entered a field of regulation. And if they have, it makes local legislation void in many attempts. So, and, and you see this all the time in the news media where uh, somebody's on television saying, well, I think the city of Atlanta needs to do so and so and regulate this. Well, truth is the city of Atlanta doesn't have any more power and authority than you do to regulate some of these areas where the state's already stepped in. see Tommy sitting back there and just give us a quick update as how the new fire station is coming. Are we, is it going up good? Okay. <laughs> well, you embarrassed them. <laughs> sorry, Tommy. Speak, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. Speaking of that, that just reminded me uh, Chief Jones sent six GSARs our Georgia search and rescue firefighters that are certified through GSARS down to South Georgia to the Albany area uh, to assist the state and local officials with search and rescue down there. And in addition to that, we've got two more crews that left yesterday going down to Thomasville to help those with our ECG a mutual aid agreement, so we're all over the state helping people, and of course we certainly want to keep the people of <coughs> South Georgia in our prayers, but it's unbelievable what's going on down there through that weather devastation, and you know, I, I can't imagine going through that, but I guess it's just the grace that it didn't come through here, so I want to think about those people, and I appreciate our employees be willing to go down there and assist. <coughs> Uh, thank you. I've got two items that I need help with. So, uh, last night at our airport authority meeting, uh, Dr. Peters, our new appointee, which you appointed, uh, jumped right in and, and offered to help on several fronts. Number one, he is going to be our marketing committee chairman to market our new airport. He has economic development contacts around the state, and we have a, about a four, or probably a five-year window to round up business, aviation, corporations, all that for the new airport. So on day one, I want it full of business and making money, and he's volunteered. So if you, when you're out in meetings, get wind of anybody who's interested in aviation business at a new airport where we got space, we want to know about them so we can hunt them down and, <laughs> and bag them and bring them in and, and develop our business. So. Dr. Peters is going to lead that charge. So, but secondly, uh, of the $60 million airport project, it's estimated around 20% or $12 million of federal money must go to the DBEs, which is disadvantaged business enterprises. This is not just minorities. It can be uh, ethnic, racial. It can be disabled veterans, sorts of folks, uh, female. It can also be just single business operators. They're considered disadvantaged when it comes to big contracts. If you're a single dump truck driver, you got a little business, and you're overwhelmed, you're considered disadvantaged. And we have folks can help you get certified. You have to be a certified DBE to get this business. So I don't want to wait five years, and then all of a sudden everybody say, we ain't getting that business. We need to find these folks now. We can, we're can. going to have some public meetings, and we've got people who can walk you through the DBE process, get you certified, so that $12 million worth of business out there can stay locally. We don't have to find a DBE in Alpharetta somewhere. We'd like to keep that money local. So please help us find these small business people. And I know they're terrified of all this federal monkey motion, we can lead their hand and help them through the process and get them registered. We need to help. 
Back in 2004, when we first hired Mr. Smith, I took him a copy of Georgia Trend Magazine. It was City of Excellence back then, when they talked about communities being the best of the best. And I challenged Mr. Smith at that time that I wanted us to be featured in Georgia Trend. And it is great joy that our communities recognize the live, work, and play. It's not the same as the City of Excellence, but it's recognized the Georgia Trend. And it's, I think it's a opportunity for us to cheer and celebrate how great and how hard we're working as a community, as a team, for the better of this community. So very proud of Brian and Miller and, and um, the team for putting it together and Amen. making it happen. So we should be very proud of that. It's 14 years, Mr. Smith. Congratulations. It took, it took us that long. 13 years, I'm sorry. 13, 13 years, so. but we got it. But it's awesome. He's not fast, but he's steady. Right? <laughs> he's steady. <laughs> Um, I would like to, you know, back in 2004 when we first hired Mr. Smith, I told him I wanted us to be featured in uh, <laughs> Sports <laughs> Illustrated. Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated. <laughs> anyway, a healthy community. That's the next award we got to work. Stole, stole my thunder because I've been on the board uh, except for four years, but since 1994, and this past uh, was that Saturday, or Sunday? Sunday, 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 first time that I was able to go up and hear the words of the city of Griffin and we're going to be recognized by Georgia Trend Magazine and it was a very proud moment. I felt real good um, just representing our great city, all of the departments, everything that makes this city great and just the handiwork of Mr. Brian Miller <coughs> uh, putting forth the things that he do, uh, that he does and he's a very talented guy. So again, I want to say congratulations to my city and I'm just glad to be a part of this team and to represent this team. So they got a healthy award now that we got we left. Without a doubt. The healthy it's the healthy award so we got a healthy award coming. Most healthy. So we don't have anything else that I entertain a motion to Second. Adjourn.